So this part is what's gonna go in the hole like that. And then this long part is what's going to attach to the inner four stay. Somehow Garrett's figured it out. And then it moves like this. Exactly. You're coming too. What started as a dream is now our reality. Six years ago, we poured her ballast, raised every frame, cut every plank, and named her Red Aviva. Ready for life back on the ocean, this year we're determined yeah. to set sail. Would you look at that? I'd say that's the making of a fine cruising vessel. <laughs> We're salt and tar, and this is our life. We're happy to share, and thanks for joining us. So I've been in between um, for the fitting for the staysail boom. If I was going to um, just do some sort of lashing, or if I was gonna make something out of steel, maybe with some like bronze sleeve bearings to go around the turnbuckle, or make something with wood. Any one of those options would work, but you know, of course it's taking the time to make something and design something. But I found this gooseneck in a random box full of old hardware. And um, I think I can make this work and I think I can make it work really easily with very minimal effort. So that always sounds better at this stage. So it's just made for a, a pretty heavy duty track, right? Plenty, plenty strong for the staysail boom. It's gonna be a kind of a rig, but you know, that's okay. As long as it's strong and it functions, it's all that matters. But this track actually fits perfectly right under the turnbuckle. It like locks in, it can't go up or down because it's sitting on the sh shoulders of the turnbuckle. So it just kind of clips in and then I think I'm just gonna put just two kind of U-bolts around each side and clamp it. And uh, for the end, it's just got this pin here with a little shoulder. So I think I'm just gonna drill a hole in the end of the uh, staysail boom and shove this pin with some epoxy in it. And I'm gonna go to the bunker and break out the staysail boom and start kind of getting an idea, getting a feel for that and hopefully make some progress today. And I have two of these, but of course the other piece I needed to slightly modify them because I didn't have the actual ones for these wide U-bolts. And when I was doing that, I flicked it overboard into the water. So now I have to go find a piece of steel and drill it and make a new one. At every project's inception, there's your strategy, which is the culmination of countless hours of thinking. Then there's reality that throws it all out the window, or in our case, overboard. Okay, so change of plans. I realized that this was too low for the Samson post before, so I'm kind of mocking up a different setup. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go with something totally different, but this is just to, to mock it up and kind of see how it works with the boom in place. So I just threw those U-bolts around it that I just spent so much time looking for. But with this setup, I'm not actually gonna use these because this can be permanently attached and we don't have to worry about it with the turnbuckles. So if all this works out, then this track still nests in like perfectly with those uh, uh, fittings where the wire's crimped. So I'll probably just take the, uh, take the body of this and just grind these corners a little bit rounder, a little bit smoother. And then I will just lash this on and definitely look cleaner than these big U-bolts. I'm gonna drill a hole in the end of the boom so I can stick it in this little peg and then we can um, mock it up in place and then I'm gonna put the staysail up and then stretch that out and mark everything kind of while it's in place. 
So next step, drill a hole. Okay, itch and an eighth Forstner bit. Okay, there it is. So, let's see how well that fits. So yeah, it looks pretty good. I wanted a, a slightly sloppy fit, so when I pour the epoxy, it'll just give everything room to kind of bite on and find something nice to grab onto so it looks good i'm just gonna kind of lash it in place for now to do the test fit I think I got it cut down to rough size and looks like everything's gonna clear when uh, everything's still loose up on the sprit the stays are still loose they haven't been I haven't tightened up the bob stay so when that is done when it's everything's all tightened up like it's gonna be when we're sailing this whole thing will actually move forward a few inches because this stay here is really loose so when everything's tightened up this will all move forward a few inches so the clearance should be totally good got enough room to get the foot nice and tight when I put a collar on back there next step is to take this back off take it back to the bunker glue that fitting in with some epoxy and then I can start sanding this all down and maybe do some filling and it used to have a track on it and had several pieces of hardware and stuff so I'll either just do some filling or I'll epoxy in some like wood dowels. Our staysail boom is yet another salvaged piece from a retired boat. Formerly a mast on a small sailboat, but now a boom on our little ship. Garrett got the staysail boom all sanded up yesterday and we are ready to secure the gooseneck to the um, forward end of the boom where it's going to attach to the inner force day. And so we're going to lift it up, kind of dangle it from the ratlins so we can make sure that the epoxy doesn't just fall out of the hole and then uh, I'm gonna soup it. So here it is. He's already carved out the hole there. And we're just gonna use some five minute quick epoxy. I don't need to do anything pretty or visual at all. I'm just gonna take a little chisel and inside of this, the big hole that I drill that we're gonna pour the epoxy and set that gooseneck into. I'm just gonna cut some gouges in it so the epoxy will really bite it. Garrett's entrusting me <laughs> to epoxy in the gooseneck there to the end of the staysail boom. I'm slightly nervous because I've never actually used this five minute epoxy and the orientation is a little bit forgiving but not too forgiving. So I'm gonna go mark up with a pencil and then uh, 
yeah, I've got about maybe a minute working time and I'll hold it in place so it stays there and uh, yeah, see how well I can get it. Okay, so here's the gooseneck. I've got it kind of lashed here to my depth. I might loosen it a little bit because this little shoulder here, we want it to be just a little, if anything, a little proud, but mostly flush. And then this part has to be perpendicular to the boom here. So I'm gonna mark a line just so I've got a reference point. Here we go. Are you guys reusing the uh, old eye bolts or are you tossing them? Um, sure. Okay. Here, here, you need some? Oh, I was just wondering if, if you were going to get rid of them. I might take one off your hands. But... I, I got a couple for you. Yeah? Yeah. Well, this, I think we needed two tubes. Really? Yeah. How much is it filling it up? It's like just below it. It's hard to tell because it's still little bubbles. Mostly full? It's mostly full. Okay. How long is this? That's a lot for it to grip on too. Is it above where I cut the notches in the wood, do you know? Yeah. Okay. I think also the wood just being so dry. Yeah. It disappeared pretty quick. You wanna come look at this, Garrett? Sure. You want me to? Pretty please. It's pretty much stuck now, but if we needed to make any slight adjustment. My only concern is the epoxy in there. Uh, yeah. To like maybe take it down and even dump some alcohol in there okay. and work this back and forth. Okay. Garrett's fixing to work on the uh, the attachment point for the furling drum on our Yankee, our furthest forward head sole. And uh, pretty soaked actually, we're getting one of these old rings. <laughs> A little bit of nap is gonna come with us. Yep, a uh, scrap retired dock ring. <laughs> I dumped a little bit of uh, acetone in this, so now it, it moves just as good as it did earlier. And this is the top side, this is the bottom. Okay, first uh, test fits with the Yankee. Got the sprit down and all tensioned up. So I'm gonna run the Yankee up on the halyard and just, you know, get a feel for how far it goes up, where to put the eye bolt, all the details and stuff. So first time ever putting it up, so pretty soaked. Oh, this thing's so sexy all the leathering and the way he stitched the the cable up the left of this one is just so nicely done stand by smaller shackle found this little bronze clasp we're gonna see if we can make this work
just trying to determine how much room we need for this. So, so just need to drill and mount that. We're ready. splintering. Ta-da! I love that, like, I keep finding little details of Mike's work that just continues to impress me. <laughs> like, there's like a little Matthew Walker on the end of this with a tiny little like circle of leather <laughs> cut that it goes through as like a oh, like little a little leather washer kind of gasket deal. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, show us. Good night. Good night. Have a good evening. See you next time. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I pull and you. Yep. I'll pull, or uh, you pull, I'll feed. But I just want to keep a little tension on the line so okay. it spools up properly. Huh? Wow, and the lines of that sail are so beautiful. Oh yeah. I love Yankees. Wow. And then the inner forestay is loose right now. But so that'll be tension. And then, yeah, the staysail is a little high cut too, but not as severe as the Yankee. And it goes essentially to the main mast there. And then of course, our main. And then our baby little mizzen in the back. I don't know, Garrett. It's almost uh, nice enough weather. We could probably get all three up. Probably could. Probably could. Why the fuck not? I don't know. What time is it? We got enough time to hoist them all up and put them all away I was, before. I mean, we got an hour. Hell yeah.
I'm doing the main. in the mizzen check that out one two three four <laughs> Garrett moving them all onto a starboard tack it's where our little poof of Breeze is coming from. Time to grab a beer. Yeah. Go from the bar. Cheers, everybody, Cheers. and a huge, huge thank you to Mike. These sales are incredible. Yeah. What? One thing that we haven't, um, that we haven't said too much, or definitely haven't said enough, is that. We didn't just send Mike a <laughs> sale plan and say, here you go. It was <laughs> over a year of planning him, me and him emailing back and forth, him asking, all right, I need these measure, this measurement and this measurement. <laughs> I would come to the boat, measure, email back and this one on. And he designed this entire sale plan yeah. for us. It didn't exist before. <laughs> so he went above he, and beyond. Yeah. It, yeah <laughs> and he was just always patient and uh the work that he turned out is just i i could never never have expected that we would have sales like this for red aviva and i'm every time i look at him i i see another detail that impresses me so mike you crushed it <laughs> cheers cheers I'm so excited i forgot my shoes Oh, and the lighting is just getting better and better.
Hello, gorgeous. We are counting down the days. Ready or not, it's time for change. Seeing all sales up is indescribable and we can't wait for what's coming next. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. gonna die before I get the camera set up for the shot and very uh, very I, I can't even speak right now <laughs> very 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 well job done is, it, is that proper English <laughs> <laughs> we're excited we're excited we're just like frothing right now <laughs> that's gonna be my problem eh. I think that's gonna be my project for the day awesome. Ruth says she doesn't trust my mind I don't I don't trust your mind. My mind is built like Fort Knox. It's impenetrable and solid. Took you a while to think about that. <laughs>